So what was the what was the thing? Oh, the the fact. Yeah, yeah. Tell me. Tell you live on air. Hey everybody! Welcome to a new episode of Who's That Anime with your host Stephen Colin, and we're still talking about Trigon because we're only on episode four. Four. Yeah. Seems like four. Should be on episode twenty-four. <laughs> not, not, not in a bad way, right? Not in a bad way. Not in a bad way. So. Uh, Earlier, just before we started recording, uh, oh, I, I mentioned Steve. I learned an interesting fact, and it was because instead of saying test testing on the, the test recording, I went testicles, and then there's no balls on elephants. Apparently, the elephants don't have balls. Huh. They don't have the sacks hanging underneath them. Because did they keep did they keep them in their trunks? Well, I mean, for Americans, yes. <laughs> oh yeah, I guess <laughs> they're in the, they're inside. Apparently. Oh. The the sacks are inside. Okay. I mean that kind of makes sense. That, like, yeah. Because all all ovaries are, is. Differently evolved testicles, and they're on the inside. I mean, suppose yeah, but now, I think that's what that is. No, yeah, it made me think of like how long is their penis? Because uh, okay, where does that start? Does that start at like the sacs, or does it start when it extrudes from the body? None of this is a great topic. <laughs> <laughs> did try to warn you. <laughs> you did, you did. I and I was like, no, you know what? I, I need, I need something. I need something for this episode. Uh-huh. Maybe I was wrong. You were. Maybe. I think you were. Anyway, um, hey people, we, uh, we're we're a bit behind this week, so this is coming live yep. on the day after. It usually comes live on. Yep. Apologies, it has been a busy week, uh, and we're at a slight delay. However. That being said, we are now going to talk about Trigun Episode 4 Hungry! Uh, not anymore. I just had my tea. Anyway, um... Uh. <laughs> I was also going to say about the video, we'll be a day later. Oh, that too. It's fine. Like, but no we, we appreciate that that definitely takes a lot more effort than, than the audio side of it. <laughs> yeah. Where I have a template that I throw it into and then slide some things around. It takes a bit longer, yeah. It's just more down to the encoding of it all. Anyway, yes. Hunger. Yes. So, we left off, obviously, with the traumatic last episode where Knives decided to purge an entire town um, with his knives. Mm -hmm. uh, And leaving Vash walking out into the desert to head to the new new promise of July. What you should have said there, actually, with Night... um, Knives, millions of knives. M- million, millions knives. Millions knives. Why do you think you got the name, man? I mean, I t- I told my brother I was like, it's like, oh, you should see this. It's nuts. And he's like, that's interesting. And I was like, his name is Knives. And he's like, well, that's on point. And I was like, better than that. His name is Millions Knives. And he's like, huh? How many knives does he have? Okay. It's like, well, <laughs> millions. Quite frankly, millions. Yeah. But yeah. Right. So he's uh heading heading away to July in tow, of course, uh is uh Roberto and uh Merrill. Mm-hmm. Uh and I think this episode actually starts off with us introducing a new character very briefly. 
before we get to the intro now. Yeah, the three uh, worm hunters. Yeah. They're and so- they see a dude in the distance. Yeah, a dude in the distance. And then comment that he's wearing a suit and that's not the right attire for the desert. They're not wrong. <laughs> no, they're not wrong. Uh, and then Kirk Hughes intro. I think, did they not say he's not going to last long? Well, like they also, that. yeah, because uh, he's wearing a suit. Did they comment on the, the thing he's carrying? I can't remember. Uh, oh, maybe. I can't remember if they do or not. Either way, you're right. It kind of goes to the intro. And then uh, we're in the car, mm-hmm. the GP thing. Yep. With... Uh, Mer- Meryl Roberto and Vash. Vash is hanging out in the back. Uh, just kind of sitting about. And uh, all of a sudden, they're like, oh, there's a there's a person <laughs> in the middle of the road. Uh, and Meryl was not paying enough attention to the road. Uh, she was... Oh, no, wait, Roberto was not paying enough attention to her. Someone wasn't paying enough attention no, to her. No, no, it was Meryl. Uh, it was Meryl. But, um... Oh, I was... I think Roberto was going to eat Vash's sandwich because he hasn't eaten anything That's since, right. since left. He hasn't touched anything since the incident. Oh, that bit where loads of people were murdered by your brother? Yeah, yeah. I remember. Uh, and then... I don't know, Meryl was thinking it was berating him about something as he as she does she, she does love to just needle him about everything yeah and i think that's how she didn't see uh the suited man oh yes and he just appears as if from nowhere <laughs> yeah and he uh she misses him with the car but like proper wax him with the trailer it's really quite amusing. Like, <laughs> it just like gets properly fly swatted off his feet. Yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, they're like, "Oh shit!" Ah, uh, okay. Get him in the back of the car. No dying on my watch, says Meryl. Uh, we need to need to find someone, and they find some sort of. I think it's like a gas station or something like that. Some sort of fueling station. Mm-hmm. Uh and they uh, they drag him in. He's look. He's definitely looking quite worse for wear in the back of the <laughs> the car as he's kind of like bobbing around like this with his nose bleeding uh, and Vash trying to hold him up. Yeah, yeah. And then it's pretty good. It's it's a pretty good intro, to be fair. Yeah, uh, I can't remember how the how he, how he was introducing the first one. I seem to remember. Excuse me. He was wandering through the desert in that and just props up his 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 accompaniment uh, that he's bringing with him. Hmm. Which we should say at this point is basically a big fucking cross covered in a blo- like a tarp. Hmm. Good, uh, a good crucifix. Oh yeah. Uh, Seems appropriate this time of it's... year. <laughs> Ken, getting closer. Uh, but yeah, they uh they drag him in there, uh, him looking not so great, uh, and they soon discover that it seems like the people who ran the station have been murdered, and then he starts to sort of uh walk about on his own, and he's not not struggling quite as much anymore, so probably the shock has worn off. Yeah. Uh, and then they find someone carrying in. Like a locker or something? A locker or something, yeah. Yeah. It's the young kid. Yeah. And they they basically bury the bodies. And the kid's just kind of crying as well. My favourite part of this whole thing is uh, our new friend trying to balance his cross in the sand so that it doesn't fall over <laughs> next to the bodies. And then he like properly pops a, a squat like 
next to the next to the buried uh next to the dead has a smoke says some uh has a drink last rites mm-hmm. and drops his bottle and Meryl's like this is you're this is terrible you're not a priest and he's like no no uh i'm actually an undertaker yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like yeah the cross is probably appropriate mm-hmm. um yeah. And of course, it's just like, oh, this is really disrespectful. <laughs> the kid's right there. Yeah, and then he goes over to the uh, kid and <laughs> brings out a lollipop. Goes, hey, kid, can you got to tough it out? So good. I know this orphanage or something. <laughs> yeah, well, it's it's like it's interesting because he's like he's like, hey, you know, here, have this. It's good. It's a lolly. I'm gonna have one. <laughs> and then they both they both have a lolly, and he's like. Yeah, you're an orphan now. I know what that's like. I was in an orphanage once. Uh, it's like this is just a really awkward conversation. And then he's like, you know, but you should smile. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, um, okay, sure, sure. And then he's like, kind of grinning manically at this child who is, as we assume, has just lost their parents or lost their their family. It's just like, it makes them smile, and you're like, all right. Sure, at least they're not miserable. I guess this will do. Yeah. And then he hands them the bill. That's beautifully timed. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the bill for my services twenty thousand double dollars. <laughs> what the? F- you never told us you were doing anything. What services? <laughs> like, well, got to make money, you know. Yeah. This is my job. Yeah. It was um. Yeah. Oh, you you literally volunteered. You were out there burying yeah. the boys before we even knew it. <laughs> is that is this where I think this oh. is maybe where Vash steps in and's like, no, no, it's okay, it's okay. He's he's <laughs> fine. Let's not antagonize him. And uh, I think does he introduce himself at this point? I there's a bit where Vash and he shake hands. Uh, yeah, I think so. I remember Roberto kind of stepping in, going, "Yo, what's this? What's all? What's all this newbie?" And uh, yeah, he sees Tony. He's like, "What kind of artist are you?" That's terrible, bro. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, he's not very good at this. <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, I think that's why he, he he introduces himself as uh, Nicholas D. Offwood. Uh which is pretty cool. Cool name. Mm-hmm. And uh, of course, he, I, I like that Vash introduces himself as Vash the Stampede. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't just say Vash. He's like, no, I'll go with the whole destructive title. It's all good. The type. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it would have been worse if he'd introduced himself as the humanoid typhoon. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. But uh Yeah. And I think just as they do that, uh, the ground starts to shake and rumble violently. Mm-hmm. Uh, and all of a sudden, we're in a scene from the movie Dune. No oh, man! And a giant sandworm, tremors, devours the whole. Oh, it, yeah, tremors, Dune, Beetlejuice. It's all there. It's, it, just, it was tremors, yeah. man. It was like holy shit. Uh, well. This, like, to brought... be fair, oh, Dune was 1984, no. and that was the movie. The book was long before that. Oh yeah, I, I get that. I understand the movie was 1984. <laughs> Tremors was probably a bit after that, actually. Uh, it was 19... I want to say 1990. 1990, you think? Yeah. I think so. I think 87. Oh, I'll take the bet. We'll do Price is Right rules. Let's find out. Price is Right rules. Oh, 1990 on the dot. It, higher. Higher. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're still wrong. <laughs> Lower. Yeah, also wrong. Uh, but yeah, uh, it, it, it's interesting. Um, how, I don't know if you've watched the new Dune. I, like, I quite liked it. But, uh, uh, I watched some of it, but... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was watching it with my folks. My dad was like, I, she'd never watch them, apparently. And still can't. It, well, to be fair, the movie is like almost three hours long. So... Both of them? 
Wait, oh, the first one's maybe not as long as that. I feel like the new one is, though. Well, oh, it always felt really long, the first one. I don't think I, I ever watched a, it all. I think that's a quality problem. Yeah, it had Patrick Stewart in it. It did. And uh, and Sting. And oh. Cal McLaughlin. Oh, yeah, Sting. Remember Sting? Jurgen Prochnow. Yeah. Jurgen Prochnow. Oh, jeez. There's yeah. name. And uh, yeah, I think it's two hours seventeen, and actually, yeah, the new one is only two hours thirty-five. So yeah, they're they're not far off each other. Yeah, oh, I think even the new ones they didn't they like cut it short. It's not like the whole thing. There might be another. So, one well, the out. thing is, I, I, yeah, I think <laughs> that was the the reason that the first June was not that great was that they really crammed that story into <laughs> to that two hours. Yeah, and uh, they only did like. A, pr- a fraction of the story in nearly three hours this time, and now they're doing a part two. Yeah, yeah. So, which I think is this year actually. Oh, the new one's coming out this year. Yeah. Wow. Um, I really like the 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 new one, so I I I'd like to watch the second part. But anyway, I I digress. Their their entire mm. petrol station or gas station or refueling station. And all of themselves are swallowed whole by a giant sandworm. See, I was going to say uh, Gears of War two. Oh yeah, it was two. Wasn't I it? forgot about those. Was that three? It was yeah, because after you ch- you chainsaw out of them. Yeah. And uh, Beard says, "I've got blood in my mouth, and it's not even mine." <laughs> Beard was always a classy character. I I remember that line to this day. Like, it's the first time I've ever heard it every time I remember it. <laughs> Such a classic so, character. so funny. Man, gotta love it. Gotta love it. But yeah, you're right. It does have a bit of that in it. Yeah. Um, so anyway, yeah, so they kind of get swallowed up. And then... Uh... For whatever reason, the kid kind of runs away. Yeah, just gone. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> so I think they're having sure. an argument about something, and then the yeah. kid just walks away. So then they go find her, and they got th- four random arteries to go through. Oh god, I'm I'm not gonna lie to you. Episode three was amazing. I'm a bit upset that this is the episode introduction for Wolfwood. <laughs> oh, what are you on about, man? This this is the exact same kind of episode you loved in Cowboy Bebop. Oh, I don't know about that. Oh, it was like <laughs> it was like the whole aliens thing. You, the whole thing looked like something out of Geiger's imagination in the inner of, of the worm. <laughs> I just just didn't even strike me that much as interesting this one oh. it's a real shame oh, sorry, missus. oh yeah yeah like uh, th- th- yeah that that aside yeah kid kid runs off and of course uh yeah they have to choose which way to go to yeah find them yeah and uh so they split off in four bits because they get four of these arteries to go up and um it cuts the barrel, find the kid un- lying unconscious. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, lying unconscious. And then something c- appears behind Meryl. And then, yeah, that was it. And then uh, the next thing you know is Vash and everyone kind of meet up on the other side of the arteries because they all go to the same place or come back. Yep. I don't know. I don't... It's not super clear, but you're right. They all meet up in this random area in the, in the beast. Uh, yeah, except Meryl. Except Meryl, and they're like, "Oh shit, we've got to go and find them." Uh, and then, then the uh, Roberto disappears, like right there on the spot, just goes, <laughs> just vanishes, just vanishes, and then. Wilfred and Bash go wandering, and, and which well, you better stop wandering around in circles then. 
and then next thing they kind of get spat out of the the worm. We should probably mention as well is that Wolfwood has not stopped smoking since he got inside the worm. <laughs> yeah. See, when they had that lot, when he gave the lollipop out, I was like, "Oh shit!" I've censored the smoking on him. <laughs> uh, yeah, they get spat out. Yeah. There's a scene somewhere along the lines where Wilfred basically asks for a cigarette off of uh, Roberto. Roberto says, Do you think I'm a charity or something? Oh, no. Uh, I think that's after, isn't it? I might be. Yeah, that's, a- that's towards the end. Yeah. Anyway. So they get spit out, spat out, and then the worm dudes are there and going, Holy moly, that's a big one. Oh, they had an argument about people being able to control the worms. Worms, yeah, that's right. I think that was Roberto, was it? And he blamed Wilfred. Was. And then yes, Wilfred says, "Nah, it's not me, mate." And then Vash step stands in and goes, "You know what? I think I I believe this guy. It's not it wasn't him. Y- yeah, he's got a good heart." Or, uh... Yeah, he does. He does say that he does have a good. Or is this, those are those are the eyes of a of someone who cares or something like that. And you're like, yeah, I sure. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah, you just you just trust a random stranger. It's all good. He likes doing that. He, he does. It is his biggest character flaw. <laughs> or his biggest character feature. Yes, it is an endearing uh, character trait. However, it can get you into a lot of problems when you you just have it unchecked. Yeah, these things be like that, that guy. Uh, so, um, yeah, so he goes. So they've been spat out, yeah. Yeah, they got spat out, uh, and then basically, <laughs> I think the worm hunt the worm hunters are going like, no. <laughs> it's like it's like oh run run this way you yeah. need to get out of the way of it and uh wolfwood's like uh we're gonna go let's get out of here and vash is like nah i'm uh I'm gonna get my friends <laughs> yeah and you can see the the worm hunters going no <laughs> don't don't stand in front of it that's <laughs> stupid yeah run away yeah yeah uh, and then, uh, and they're back in the worm. Yep. <laughs> and then the the bump- wait. Did they get back in the worm? Is it Wolfwood who gets them back in? Uh, I don't know. Can't remember. Is this? It, I can't remember if this is the bit where he whips out the cross. Uh, no, no. For the first time. No, I think that's in inside. Is that inside the worm? Yeah. Okay. Inside the worm because they they meet the the kid inside the worm. Yeah, go, yeah you're right. That's right. They go, you, you're the one that controls the worms. Yep. And then and the kid's like, "Yup, yeah, it's me, it's me." And also, as your fools, you think you think a, a crying kid next to a couple. Dead bodies is the child type thing. Man, I played the all for fools. T- to be fair, I also immediately went to the oh that poor kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and um, what's her name? She said you can call me. Oh no, no, no! She doesn't say that. It's uh, that's later in another conversation. All all they do is is like they put on a mask. <laughs> That makes them look like Skull Kid from Majora's Mask. It just <laughs> flies out the side of the oh, that, the, the thing. I thought, well, uh, Wilfred, did he not blast the hole in the side? He that's how that's how they escape because there's a huge hole in the side of the worm now. Yeah, because Wilfred's like one of those guys with a sign telling you where to buy a, a subway. Going, oh yeah, with his cross. Yeah, and it looks really damn cool. <laughs> Yeah. 
well, it's all right. Um, but she had the power to like even control the innards of the worm, where it kind of like that's true. Started sucking Vash in. Yeah, that's right. Oh, that's right. Because yeah, he's getting sucked into the ground, and he's like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna blast this," and you're like, "Oh, he's gonna shoot Vash," and then he shoots around Vash to release him from the ground, and then blasts the hole in the side of the the worm. Oh, I... it's very. It's very cool. I, saw the... I, I like the I like the I like the cross gun. It's a very cool gun. It's a ridiculous gun. It's all it, as... it's, it's completely absurd. Almost as ridiculous as Gungrave's gun. I have yet to watch Gungrave. I'll need to do that at some point. I got the game. And I... oh, the new one? No, no, the the one that came out the PS2. Oh wow. And, nice. I, and then when I heard them, they made a new one, I was like, "What?" And I think the new one's, yep. I thought the new one's VR. Is it? Yeah, I think it is. I haven't seen it. Can't all be in VR because I've seen it being played normally. Oh, well, maybe not. And it look, it looks like a proper three sixty generation character action game. <laughs> yeah, with better graphics, right? Yeah, in the best way possible. You know, like, I I had a great affinity for those kind of character action games in that time, so. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's mental, but, yeah, Gun Graves is we could watch, because it's mental. That's <laughs> just fucking insane. <laughs> it's a weird-ass show, that one. Yeah, I never. I, 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 I had suggested potentially doing um, Shinsekai Yori. Which one's that again? Uh, Into the New World. Is it Into the New World? I think that's what it's called. Into the New World. Uh, from the New World. From the New World. Yeah, and it's like, uh, it's a weird place where everyone has powers and shit, and there's a. There's more people and yeah. Oh wait, is that? Oh, I think I, I think I've seen that. It's like got some weird creature did in it. Yes, it's been a while. Like I watched it as soon as it came out. All right. And then you not like do some in fact genocide kind of motion in in a cave. Uh, yes, yes, they did. Uh, I yeah, saw... I, I like that show. It was good. Yeah, I, I saw some clips of it. Well, yeah. I don't think it showed all the genocide because it probably got banned on YouTube. But uh... <laughs> no, I watched it all. I think it would be on its first thing, its first release on Crunchyroll, which would be like probably the year after it was released, so about ten years ago. Oh, is that old? oh, I'm gonna be thinking somewhere else then. You sure? Possibly. We'll talk about it later. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah, you're right. Uh, so, uh, the the little kid has now escaped out the side of the the giant worm. Yeah. Uh, and uh, <laughs> Wolfwood's like, well, it's time to end this. Yeah. <laughs> and he just like goes full on cyber madman with his cross and like yep let's just turn this bad boy around turn on this laser and just like fires a really powerful beam out the top of the worm and then it cuts to outside of the worm and it just goes whoop, <laughs> right round it and the worm just falls in half yep and the worm people are like whoa they're very happy because they have food yeah <laughs> Oh. oh, here's a point though, uh -huh. and I, I I didn't want to ask this because immediately when that happened, it was like, that was awesome. I wonder if we know if Meryl and Roberto survived. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I hope they weren't in a direct line <laughs> with the worm, because otherwise <laughs> they're dust. Yeah. But uh, apparently not. <laughs> yeah, apparently they're just fine. Also, um, Majora's Mask is like, I'll get you next time, Gadget. That's right. Oh, it's beautiful. I'll get and you yeah, next time, Gadget. I can't do this. Then voice. it cuts to uh, 
Uh, it's a tough voice. Mm. They all cut to, I think, them having a little uh, camping thing, cooking some food on the fire with the worm hunters. And they're all like, yeah, this is amazing, getting uh, Meryl to try and eat some uh, or some some worm, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a Vash who's like eating away now. He's decided he can eat because he can be happy because Wolfwood told that kid that they could be happy, <laughs> even though they were sad. And he's like, I could be happy. <laughs> this so, is fine. So along those lines, yeah. And Meryl's it like- is almost as it's batshit logic because I think he even says to Wolfwood, he's like, I deserve this, right? I can be happy. <laughs> he's like, yeah, sure. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is, um, Meryl is totally disgusted by it and Wolf is trying to force it down her face. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is the bit where, uh, they're having the conversation as well where he's like trying to get, he just like bums a cigarette from Roberto immediately. <laughs> and he's like, you seem to be under the misapprehension that I am generous. I am not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's sounds to the end of that episode. Well, it, it cuts to uh, Wolfwood later on mm-hmm. uh, secretly meeting the mask child. Mm-hmm. That is true. And this is this is where, where we find out that uh, the name of Mass Child is Zazzy the Beast. Uh, Zazzy the Beast. Zazzy. It's interesting, Zazzy the Beast, because I believe there is a pop artist called Zazzy Beats. <laughs> so it's all I heard. <laughs> <laughs> Zazzy Beats. Oh, dear. Zazzy, Zazzy Beats. Yeah, it is. There is like literally something called Zazzy Beats. <laughs> I, they're not pop artists, sorry, they're an actress. Apologies. Oh. But yeah, I was like, oh man. Maybe, maybe <laughs> in just... fact, who is that? That's the person who plays Domino in Deadpool 2. Yeah. That sounds about right. There you go. That's how he beats. Yeah. And uh, of course, at this point, it's also alluded to that. Uh, Zazzy the Beast and also Wolfwood might just be employees of a certain brother of a certain person. Uh, is it? I think so. I think they're alluding to the fact that they're being paid to do that. And and also Zazzy's like, you know, because you're just going to toy with them and then kill them because, you know, you like doing that. Right, Wolfwood? And he's like, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll be interested to see how this turns out. Yeah, I definitely uh, can't go can't go badly, right? Nope, can't go badly. I mean, in the original, it wasn't like straight off the bat. I'm a double agent. No, there was uh, there was definitely time. <laughs> Some time, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, yeah. So that, that's that. That's the end. You've. Yeah. Untangled the mysteries straight away. <laughs> and, uh... Actually, I've just realized where the name Hungry comes from because that's what Wolfwood shouts before he blows a hole in the worm. Is it? He goes, Yeah, because he's like, Hey, Hungry! And then just shoots a massive hole in the side of the worm. I'd forgotten about that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's going to be it. Yeah, I liked how uh... she puts the mask on and the mask. And then she's like picked up by like this like random yeah. flying bug thing <laughs> that clearly didn't have the strength to carry her away. But but it did it. But it did uh, it. Yeah, I. How do you rate this one, Colin? Ah, it has some humor in it. Uh, I very much didn't pay much attention to it. I saw the flashy uh, lip, lip work. Thank you, the lip. Uh-huh. And I think there's another scene that we might have missed. At the end, where Did we? people discussed that Vash may have used his abilities. Oh. I think right at the end. Yeah, you might be right. Or is that the start of the next one? No, the start of the next one. Eh. Uh. I, eh, I, mm. I don't know. It wasn't. It didn't hold my interest. 
But I don't no. know if that's because I watched it in a rush because I was doing. I had to go and do something else. I. D- I. I think it just felt like a lot to happen in a short space of time. Like, it felt to me like that was a couple of episodes worth of stuff. Yeah. And nothing was ever really elaborated on. Like, the the whole thing of like them getting lost in the worm and being like taken away one at a time mm-hmm. happened in about 60 seconds. It's like, yeah, but you could have like eked that out a bit and made it a bit more suspenseful and like you know, driv- driven that home a little bit and also sort of the fight, despite being really cool, was over very quickly um, and also th- like things were revealed to almost immediately within the, the episode <laughs> as well. It's like, I can't contain this anymore, I'm kind of a bad guy. Oh, shit. Yeah. Very much. I was, uh, yeah, well, I don't know if that's just because they just quite kind of do it within 10 episodes, the whole thing. Twelve. 12. I, th- I think you're right, though. I-, I think you're right. I think it's like it's important to get this stuff out of the way and have this be a part of it. Mm. Um, but it feels... I-, I think, like, considering the previous episodes, where they felt really well-paced mm. um, and very sort of narrative-driven and-, and-, and interesting, this one definitely felt almost like a side quest episode and yet introduced one of the most, like, the main characters in the show yeah yeah well, wilford man he's a he's the dude but oh, how's it gonna love him how's he gonna get his love interest though find out how, how who's gonna convert him to be good because it wasn't vash. maybe maybe vash this time <laughs> maybe because it wasn't vash last time so it's... no what's your what's your score then Six or seven. I'm. I I think it's a six. Yeah, um, it's rather than on seven. It's it's I I was almost at a low seven, but like as an intro, like I really liked the the actual introduction of Wolfwood was really funny and really humorous, and I was kind of with the episode up until they went into the worm, and then I think it just kind of fell apart a little bit in there. Yeah, um, I think you're right. Yeah, like I say, the, 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 which coincidentally I think is like almost is like close to the half of the episode. Sort of, it just, yeah, it, I think they tried to do too much in that last half, uh, too quickly. It just didn't feel didn't feel paced right for me. So yeah, I think I'd probably go with a six as well. Yeah, it's just the it was kind of interesting for the first part, and then, like you said, they're going the worm, and it's like, oh, then the worm, all right, oh, like everyone's split now, up now. Right. Now, now we're out the worm. Now we're, now we're back in the worm. Oh man, it's it's gears of war too. It is. <laughs> Didn't they all go back into the worm? I think they did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the worm, and then went back in. They went up. Oh, yeah, it was Gears of War 2 where it was like on land, underneath the land, yep. on land, underground again, uh, yep. on land, underground again. Um, we're now Still in the world. waiting for that remake. I, I would kill for a remake of Gears of War 2. Was it the remake 1? Yeah, they did an ultimate edition of 1, yeah. Well, well it must be over 10 years now. Oh, yes. Gears of War 2 was 2009. 8. 2008. Oh, coming up for the 20th. <laughs> That's the 25th anniversary. <laughs> well, the 15th anniversary this year. It's it's the 15th anniversary for sure. And Gears of War 1, I think, was 2006. Yeah. And then 3, I think, was 2010. I wonder if they want to do that though, because they're not just kind of remaster them all. I would be all right with. Actually, I would prefer a remake of the second one, like a proper, 
build it in, in the new engine thing. <laughs> yeah, and the Gear Six engine. It's Gear Six. Well, whatever. Gear, if Gear Six is even a thing. It's Gear Five, wasn't the last one? I think. Yeah, five was the last. Presumably, presumably it is though, right? Like the last one has to be. Oh well, Gears of War Six has to be a thing, surely. Yeah, like the uh, try. I don't actually think I completed five. In single player. Oh, it was good. It's just played multiplayer um, all the time. It was better than four. Uh, yeah, yeah, Gears of War. 5, oh, holy shit, Gears of War Five was twenty nineteen. Yeah, it was for a lot then. Damn. Was, um, yeah, I, I've I played four. I was like, right, fuck it. Play, uh, play through four. Uh, and then I got to the end of four. And I was like, oh god, I can't be bothered playing five. <laughs> and then when you go to five, it's like a completely different story altogether. They just like ditched the four's ending, almost to a bit. Gears of War, Gears of War three was two thousand eleven. Shit, uh-huh. that's crazy. I think the second or. Uh, Midnight release I went to. Yeah, I went to the Gears of War 2 midnight release. I went to the Gears of War 3 midnight release. Yeah, I didn't do And it I went to the Halo 3 midnight release. <laughs> and I went to the Grand Theft Auto 4 midnight release. Yeah. And Grand Theft Auto 4 midnight release is the reason I got an Xbox. Yep, because you bought the game and didn't have a console. Yeah, I was in there and kind of, the doors kind of got locked in the game station. I was like, oh, shit. I took some of the space. I better buy something. I better buy something. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. And then I got my uh, Halo 3 limited edition uh, Xbox. Xbox. Because it's on the cheap. Nice. And then, nice. And then Red Ring died. Boop, 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 boop. I think I've, I've, I might have like upwards of four broken Xbox 360s in this house. Oh, Jesus, man. <laughs> four? Yeah. All Red Ring? Yes. All Reed. <laughs> yeah, well, two of them are dev kits. Oh. Is that just, they just kind of like got the death signal sent to them because they realised it wasn't a... Uh... No. No, they, I think they they think they were broken on arrival. All right. I've never taken them apart to take a look because I probably could fix them. Oh, the um, the red ring. It's yeah. It was like a, a transistor melted on mine, and I tried to fix it. I, well, it depends, like, because I think my when mine red ringed originally, it was the a, a, a surge power surge fracture cracked the solder to the. Uh, to the one of the bo- the daughter boards, I think. Yeah. Oh, mine was definitely a transistor or something fell off. Because it, it it finally, I was like, oh yeah, I can get it back on, and I can like do this, and uh, it worked for a bit, and then it just kind of went. Mm, you know what? I'm done. I'm, I'm done, and it actually fell off, fell off. I was oh, oh well, I'm not fixing it up. Then you turned it into a PC. Yeah. Well, I ripped out the. Contents and turn it into a PC. Still have didn't, it. I didn't. I help you sold. Didn't I help you solder in the power? Oh, the for that. Maybe. Yeah. We. Ho- I'm sure at one point we had it hooked up so that the power button actually powered on the. Yeah. For the, the PC. And then that, I think that failed. Because I, th- I think we were yeah. crossing things. So. And I got like, as you say, of course it failed. It it involved me soldering something. <laughs> yeah, well, I think we weren't didn't use like the proper soldering tool, as in like yeah, my my soldering is not good. That's the big one. Uh, and then, uh, now I just solder in the actual like switch. Click click. Nice. But, That'll do it. But it's, you can only if you got your case, kind of flick it on and flick it off. Otherwise, you. Flick it on and has constant power and it just turns itself off. <laughs> As you do. It's amazing. It was just a weak, amazing. weak flicky switch. Still there. Still got it. It's in the arcade. Nice. I'm... Is it powering the arcade? Power and part of it. 
the ah. the main part. I need to nice. sort that out properly. So sitting in the living room. Well, no. That is a conversation for another podcast. <laughs> well, that is Colin does podcast arcade. <laughs> That's call it Colin's arcade. Yeah, it's coming soon. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Well, we've managed to do it again. Another episode has been recorded. Mm-hmm. Um, not in time, though. Episode four. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. No, not in time. That's fair. But yeah, epi- episode four. Done and dusted. I'm hoping episode five will lead to be a little bit more interesting. So this one, the next one, episode five, we'll be recording hopefully on time uh, and getting that released. Uh, of course, Who's That Anime is an anime podcast that you can find at anchor.fm for slash Who's That Anime and can be found where all good podcasts can be found or anywhere you can use an RSS feed. I think we're contractually obliged to probably say that you can find it on Spotify at this point because we're on Anchor, which is now po- Spotify for podcasters, I think, is the the thing. I, so I never yeah. read the terms and conditions, man. No. It's all right. I'm mentioning it now just in case. But <laughs> we also have a Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash who's that anime, where we post the latest episodes and the occasional anime meme. Uh, we, have a, we have a Discord. Uh, I will have the link for that in the show notes. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel where Colin painstakingly puts together the video components of these episodes. Um, we'll be we're now sort of up to date with episodes in terms of releasing them close enough to the actual release of the podcast. So we'll the next episode we put up will be this one too. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can find that by going to YouTube.com and searching for the channel Who's That Anime. I think we have an at on YouTube now. It's at Who's That Anime. So you should be able to search that. I think um, I'll look into that too. Okay. Uh, Colin and I occasionally like to play video games. Uh, Colin does this at twitch.tv forward slash couchfuel. What the fuck? <laughs> That's what happened? Uh, YouTube shorts. <laughs> Sorry, man. Some things that really suck about summer. <laughs> 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 Speaking of YouTube, uh, but yeah. I like to play things on twitch.tv forward slash Hail Payment. Uh, there is a good archive of both of the contents from both of those Twitch channels on YouTube if you search for the YouTube channels Couch Fuel or Hail Payment. Uh, I think that's us, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's us. Holy shit. We're done. Again. We're there. End of the episode. Well, and we'll be back. In in this, yeah. And oh, end it. Oh, oh, yeah. That's it. That's what I'm thinking of. It's the uh, the scene where Harry, uh, in Harry Birdman, where Falcon Seven is trying to open his locked door just before he goes. It's missing. You know the one where he got black watch flying. Uh, yes. it's and he's just like on about putting his keys into the hole. Uh, there we go. Uh, uh, there. Uh. Oh. I thought you were doing the hole. It's me, Phil, Ken, Seb, Ben. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what a show. Yeah. What a show. Miss that. Anyway. But, uh, Classic. No, I, I was just kind of was, but it was, it was just the. I don't know why that scene came into my head. It was like, just getting these keys in this door. <laughs> <laughs> He's wearing an eye patch. Yeah. It's important, important detail. He's, and it's a peripheral version. It's peripheral version? Peripheral vision. And depth perception. Oh, yeah. It's, it's quite impaired. He always points in the most random place that seems to be far off, like, from where he was looking, it's like I it was like, it's a, it's a great show. Not there. Still need to watch Bird Girl. Or not there. <laughs> and Har- Har- Harvey was sitting on the table instead of the chair. It's so good. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we'll be back next week for episode five. Same amount of time, same amount of place. Catch you later. You know some things that suck about summer. No. <laughs> <laughs>